This video is brought to you by SailRite. Visit SailRite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. The cushion that we're going to be showing you how to make in this video has a knee riser here. This knee riser is built to basically hold the occupant in the cushion, say on a power boat or a sailboat. But also, this cushion does not have a backer board. Typically, you see these knee risers with a board and then the fabric is pulled over the board and stapled around the perimeter. This one actually has a fabric bottom and a fabric pole with a zipper in it to separate the two heights of foam, the high-rise foam and the low-rise foam. Here's a look inside the fabric cover. You can see the fabric pole with zipper there. This knee riser is perfectly straight, but there are some that do take a curve. If you'd like to see how to do one with a curve, leave some comments below. If we see enough interest, we may do that. We'll be making this cushion out of a high quality marine seating vinyl, but if you'd like, you can use a woven fabric. The principle is exactly the same. Since we're creating a cushion from scratch, we're going to be cutting new foam to make this contoured cushion. If you plan to use your old foam from an old cushion, skip this chapter and the following and go to determining plate and boxing size. What type of foam should you use for a cushion like this? Well, we're going to be using polyurethane foam and ours is a high density polyurethane foam and we've chosen a firm uh, IFD. But you could also use dry fast. Dry fast allows the water to go right through the foam. So if you're using a breathable fabric or if you have a fabric on the underside that allows the air and water to escape, this is a great foam for that. If your cushions are not being used on a regular basis, then you can get away with a medium density foam because density has to do with longevity. If you're using the cushions on a regular basis and you want a high quality foam that'll last without bottoming out, then you should choose a high density foam. So the higher the density, the longer the life of the foam if used on a, a regular basis. Now IFD has to do with the firmness of the foam. So this is a firm foam pretty hard to compress it, which we really like for these uh, cushions. And this too is a dry fast in a firm foam. Now, if you like a little bit softer cushions, you may want to go with a medium firmness. The Sarat website has all kinds of information about that. We typically cut the foam to about one inch larger on the length and depth than the opening it will fit into. We desire our finished cushion to be about 22 inches lengthwise and 19 inches in depth, so we will cut the foam to 23 inches by 20 inches. It's now time to cut the foam to size. We chose a high density polyurethane foam. We're going to use the clear acrylic ruler and mark the foam to the correct size for our cushion application. This is a Sayerite blade foam saw. It's phenomenal for cutting foam like this. It has a flat base to make your cut almost perfectly vertical. You can also use an electric kitchen knife, though with high density foams it's a little bit hard to cut that foam with an electric kitchen knife. We're going to be gluing a one inch piece of foam to this four inch high riser that we're cutting right now, which is the knee riser. And then we'll use the 4-inch foam for the back portion, or the low-rise foam, which is actually the seat cushion. So that way we'll be saving money. We won't have to buy a 4-inch sheet of foam and a 5-inch sheet of foam, but rather just a 4-inch and a 1-inch, which the 1-inch is much cheaper. So here's an electric kitchen knife, and we're just going to cut this piece off to show you that you can use this. And this is a high density foam. If you're cutting a medium or low density foam, the electric kitchen knife actually works great. With higher density foam, it doesn't work as well. So the Sayrite blade foam saw does a much better job of keeping a nice crisp edge, while electric kitchen knife doesn't make as nice of an edge as the uh, Sayrite blade foam saw, but this is still acceptable for a cushion. Even though it has a little bit of a jagged edge, this will not be seen when the vinyl or the fabric is pushed up tightly against the foam. So this is not a bad thing. So we've cut the foam. This is the uh, low foam and this is the high foam, but it's still four inches. A great way to increase the height of the foam is to just use a one inch piece of foam and glue it to the uh, high rise or the knee riser. So we're going to do that here. That one inch piece is obviously some scrap we had left over from another job. 
So we're using foam lock spray adhesive to glue this uh, polyurethane foam together. One inch high density firm with four inch high density firm. And we want to spray both surfaces. Please subscribe to the Sarat YouTube channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Also, please do us a favor and hit the thumbs up. It helps with YouTube algorithm. Now we want this to tack up, so we need to give it a few minutes to tack up before we glue it together. So when you touch this, does it uh, stick? Is it sticky? Yes, that means it's ready to be bonded together. Gluing pieces of foam together is very common. In fact, you can actually glue just one or two inches to the side if you need it to be a little bit bigger and you don't have enough foam. We'll cut any excess that hangs over the sides and now our knee riser, or our high foam, is ready for use. Next up, it's time to determine the plate and boxing sizes. When you're making a cushion, we're going to be referring to some things that we want you to know in advance what they are. Plates and boxing. A plate is usually the top surface of a fabric. So this would be a top plate, this would be a top plate. Now this plate incorporates the boxing. The boxing is the side of a cushion. The bottom is also called a plate as well. So plates, boxing, and if the back had a zipper in it, this would be called a zipper plaque. And now that you know the appropriate terms, here's a look ahead at all the plates and boxing that we're going to need to cut. So as we discuss measuring the foam, this hopefully will help you understand what we're doing. For projects like this, I need to take measurements of the cut foam that we did. Ours is 23 by 15, and we know that it's four inches high. This one, our high rise foam, we're gonna call this one the low foam and the high foam. This one is five by five by 23. So this cushion is going to have plates. Plates are usually the top side and the bottom side, and boxing. Boxing are the sides. So we'll concentrate first on this low plate. This low plate will be the exact same length of the foam and the depth of the foam plus a half inch here for the area where it's going to pull down into the foam. So this is 15 inches. We're going to do 15 and a half. This is 23 inches, it's gonna be 23 inches. For the high plate, which is here, we're going to incorporate this plate with the boxing, so there'll be no seam here. So to do this one, this is five inches, the foam is, we need to add a half inch for where it's gonna join down here, so that'd be five and a half inches. And then for the height, which is the boxing, this is five inches here, we need to add a half inch there. So that is five and a half inches plus five and a half inches, and then we're gonna put an extra safety factor in of another half inch. Why? Well, when you take the fabric and when you pull it taut, these corners are gonna collapse a little bit, and that's what we want to give it a little bit of a rounded shape. And we don't know the exact location of where this will end, so it's actually gonna be a little bit longer than the bottom edge where it will be seamed, and we'll cut that off in a later stage. So basically, this side, plus this side, plus one and a half inches. For the boxing towards the back, which is right here, this is a four inch foam. We wanna add a half inch to that. So this will be cut four and a half inches in the fabric. The length will be exactly what the foam is. This is 23 inches, so it'll be 23 inches exactly. For the side boxing, which is on this side and also on this side, we want the bottom edge to be the same distance from edge to edge of the foam. And then we're gonna add uh, a half inch to this measurement, so this will be four and a half. We're gonna add a half inch to this measurement up, so this will be five and a half. The bottom plate, which will be the underside of the cushion, should be this exact measurement by this exact measurement. If you open up this cushion cover and you look inside, you can see a piece of fabric with a zipper in the center. And this fabric separates the two pieces of foam, the low rise foam and the high rise foam. And the, that fabric pull pulls the seam down so there's a nice shape between the high foam and the low foam. The size of the fabric pull should be one and a half inches smaller than the length 
and one inches higher than the low foam. So our fabric pole will be cut to 21 and a half inches and five inches high. It's highly likely that your cushion size will be different. You should write all your measurements down and calculations before you proceed. What if you're using old foam and you're reusing it? We've cut new foam to size, which makes it easy to measure because none of the sides are compressed. On older pieces of foam, you can still do this if you want to reuse your foam. All you need to do is take a measurement of the area that's not compressed and the widest area. So down here, typically towards the middle of the foam, it won't be compressed much. So that's a good measurement area. Same thing with the low foam. It'll be compressed here. So take a measurement at the widest part for all of these measurements we just took. Now that we have the measurements, it's now time to pattern and cut the fabric to the correct size. We'll be using a premium vinyl called Sombrella Horizon. It's an engineered synthetic leather and it's a four-way stretch. So it stretches along the width of the fabric and also the running length of the fabric and obviously on the bias. And if you look at the back side, it has a beautiful backing. Great vinyl fabric for cushions like this. Okay, we like to mark on the back side of our vinyl fabric. Now you can also do this in a woven fabric as well. The principles are still exactly the same. Now I love to use the clear acrylic ruler. It makes measuring easy. So low plate uh, 15 and a half. The underside of most vinyl seating fabrics like this umbrella uh, horizon, which is a faux leather, can be marked with a pencil. We're using the scryball pencil to do this. And we're just marking the underside of the fabric with all the calculations we made when we just measured the foam in the previous chapter. As you measure each one of the plates and the boxing, it's a good idea to label each one of those panels so you don't get confused later on. Now cutting the plates in the back boxing is easy but cutting the side boxing is a little bit more complicated. Let's go over that now. So the side boxing is marked at 20 inches. So I'm gonna strike a line at 20 inches from here to there. And then I'm gonna come up the side uh, five and a half inches, which is right there. Then I'm going to come over at that junction five and a half inches so right here, five and a half inches, right to there. Then I'm gonna come straight down with a line that actually carries all the way down to the bottom edge here, making sure that everything is perfectly um, perpendicular to each other. Then I'm going to measure up from this edge four and a half inches. This is right there. That is our side boxing. Now for the second one, we need to mirror it. And so what I've done is I've cut out little pieces of fabric to basically emulate this. So this one's like this, wrong side up, right sides down. So what we need to do is we need to mirror it. So what I need to do is do that. So I'm gonna do a duplicate of that, measuring it here. We'll not show the whole process for making the second side boxing. Now we need to create a curved corner at the top of the high rise or knee riser. We're going to do that with a solo cup. Now I'm going to round this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner with a red solo cup. I find it to be a perfect uh, way to get a corner that's just excellent for this type of cushion. These curves will make it much easier to sew the top of the knee riser to the plate when it comes time to do so. Notice how this line runs right into this? That's perfect. When we make a knee riser cushion, our high foam is usually only one inch higher than the low foam. Now it's time to cut everything out. Do not cut on this line and this line. Those are for references only. We'll cut the side boxing, back boxing, and the two plates out. After all of these are cut out, then we're going to cut the bottom plate, but we're going to use a different fabric completely for it. We're going to use a Pfeiffertex mesh. Now for the bottom plate, I'm using just Pfeiffertex uh, mesh vinyl fabric. 
and I've already measured it to the correct side and I love to use the Scryball pencil black to mark on Pfeiffer Tex. Um, you can use a pencil, sometimes a pencil won't show up as well, or uh, a, a Sharpie marker, but the, uh, the issue with a Sharpie marker is it might get on your vinyl, so just want to be careful with it. Here are some other fabrics that can be used as a backside fabric. Cushion underlining material, Pfeiffertex, and Pfeiffertex Plus, all available from Sailrite. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the Pfeiffertex uh, material for the fabric pole. You can also use a stable fabric if you have some scrap. You just don't want to use a four-way stretch for the fabric pole. We want the fabric pole to be one inch larger than our low foam. Our low foam is four inches, so we've made it five inches. And you want the fabric pole to be uh, one and a half inches uh, smaller than the width of the foam. We had 23, so this is 21 and a half. If you're using vinyl fabric like we are, and also a uh, mesh fabric for the uh, back plate, you can cut it with scissors. If you're using a woven fabric, you may want to consider using the Sayerite Edge hot knife so that it seals the edges of the fabric so that it doesn't unravel much. Everything is cut out, it's ready to be assembled, and here's what you should technically have if you're making a cushion like this. We'll grab the fabric pole and now install a zipper in it. The zipper will allow us to insert the high foam in the front of the cushion. This is our fabric pole and we want to install a zipper down the middle so I'm going to cut it just a slight big, bit bigger than the overall length of the fabric pole. I'm going to place a seamstick basting tape for canvas and upholstery along the flange of the zipper just to keep everything nice and flat and make it easy for sewing. You want to keep this double-sided tape as far away from the zipper's teeth as possible. We're also using a YKK number no. 5 Vizlon zipper, so it doesn't matter if the slider gets put on with its polar this way or that way. If you use a coil zipper, then you have to be careful about how the plate is uh, orientated in the cushion. So a Vizlon uh, eliminates that possible mistake. So we'll peel off the transfer paper of uh, both sides of the zipper, revealing the glue. So now, does it have to be perfectly centered? No, it doesn't, but uh, we want to try to get it as close to the center as possible. No one's going to see this. It's going to be inside the cushion. We want it nice and flat. So we're going to sew this before we split it in half. We're going to move our needle to the right position. We're sewing a straight stitch about five or six millimeters in length. Be sure you do reversing at the beginning and the end of each stitches. We're using a V92 polyester thread in a size number 20 needle. I always like to sew zippers on the same side of the presser foot, that way that the uh, stitch is even. Not that anybody's going to be seeing this. So here's our zipper. We want to turn this over. And we, I love to use a seam ripper to do this. And then I put the red ball in here and I just try to keep it down the center as much as I possibly can. Again, nobody's going to see this, so don't worry if you're a little bit off. Just don't ever get too close to your stitching. We go all the way through. So now it's separated. Now we'll grab the back plate and we're going to finish it off by adding the zipper pull and a zipper opening. This is the forward edge of my uh, uh, back plate and along the length I want to put a vinyl piece that's right on top of this so that if somebody sees this fabric when the uh, cushion vinyl is put on they don't see whatever you're using as your back plate. So I'm going to cut a strip that's this length by three inches. Here's a look ahead at the cushion turned upside down. That strip along the forward edge will be visible if the forward edge is popped up a little bit. You won't see that mesh, but just the vinyl. So it'll look like it's finished on the underside. We're using the same vinyl that we used for the rest of the cushion to put this strip on the front of the back plate. We're going to put the seam stick uh, down both long edges of this piece so that it doesn't move while we're sewing. I want it to be directly on top of the back plate with no bubbles. Again, the only reason we're putting this vinyl on the bottom plate 
uh, at the forward edge is that if that forward edge peeks out from underneath the cushion, you won't see the mesh material, you'll see the uh, Sumbrella Horizon vinyl. Now we'll sew this. We want to sew uh, very close to the raw edge because I don't want this stitch to show up after my half inch seam allowance. And we want to do reversing at the beginning and the end. As you sew along the forward edge of this back plate, just be sure this stitch goes no deeper than a half inch along that edge. Now again, I'm going to put a stitch very close to this edge. Nothing else is going to be here. There's no fold, so make sure this stitch is not too far from this edge so that it holds it down well. Now this stitch will be visible on the bottom side of the cushion, but uh, who cares? Who lifts up the bottom side of the cushion to take a look at it? Not very many people. Good. Now since we have a vinyl piece on, this officially becomes the right side of the fabric. So we're going to flip it so that the wrong side is up. So the vinyl piece is now on the bottom side. And on this side, this is the back side, I'm going to put a zipper here. Now you can put a zipper in the boxing if you like, but this is just a fast way to make a cushion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up three inches from the edge. Now this is not the location of the center of the zipper, but it's the location for the flange of the zipper. And I'm going to measure over one inch from the edge, strike a line, one inch from this edge. So my zipper is going to fall short, basically, by about an inch. I'm going to cut this zipper uh, a little bit longer. Again, I like to have some extra, extra in this than that uh, line that we struck on the fabric. And I'm going to apply double-sided tape to the flange of the zipper, keeping it far away from the zipper's teeth, like we talked about earlier. Notice how I put double-sided tape down. What I do is I put one finger here on the double-sided tape, then I, I line it up and I use my thumb and I basically walk like this. This kind of helps you from stretching the fabric if it's fabric that you're applying it to and it's also a quick way to apply double-sided tape. So the zipper is going to go, the flange of the zipper is going to go on this line. So I'm going to position it so you can see it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the zipper right there where we marked the material and notice the uh, flange is right up against that line that we have. We want this zipper to be pretty straight because it may be visible if somebody flips the cushion to look at the back side. Perfect. Okay, I put my needle back in center position to sew that uh, vinyl strip on the uh, bottom plate, I'm going to put it over the right again so I can get close to the zipper's teeth. Make sure you do reversing. Now I typically like to sew zippers on the same side, but then I have all this extra fabric that I'd have to roll underneath the arm of the sewing machine, so I'm going to move my needle positioning bracket to the left and sew it on this side. I'm going to try to do this as carefully as possible. This may be visible if somebody flips the cushion. If you're off, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal because not many people flip a cushion to look at the bottom side. And we will stop about an inch or so from this end. So now that we have the slit done, I'm going to flip this back over and I'm going to uh, separate the uh, teeth. So I'm going to up, 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 up like this. Then I'm going to put the slider on so that the slider's polar is facing down. So the zipper's teeth are open and I'm pushing the fat end of the slider onto the end of the zipper as the teeth are even from side to side. And I'm lifting the back edge of the slider slightly so that I can zip it in place because that uh, slider polar is on the underside facing forward. And now it's on the zipper. We'll push the slider to the middle of the assembly right about there. We've taken some scrap vinyl and we're just going to cut a little rectangle here, two of them, and we're going to fold this in half 
like that, and we're going to put it very close to the end of the zipper here. This reinforces the zipper and also makes it possible for us to easily separate the cushion uh, to insert the foam without the ends popping uh, free. I'm going to put my needle back in center position. Now when I sew over the zipper's teeth, I want to be careful so that I don't deflect a needle. So I'm going to go slow. And then I'm going to go in reverse. Notice that I'm sewing really close to the uh, folded edge of the uh, vinyl. That should do it. We'll do the same thing to the other end. Now the excess here, I'm going to trim away. So let me cut my threads and I'll show you what I mean by that. I don't need this extra, it's just going to get in the way of the seam. So I'm going to trim some of that away. There we go. So this is our bottom plate. This is the wrong side. I'm going to take my uh, high rise or knee riser and I'm going to position it right at the edge of the fabric. So there's just a little bit of fabric protruding at the edge here. Okay. And then I'm going to mark where the foam rests right here. So I'm going to strike a line here. You can go all the way across, doesn't matter. At that location, it's straight with the uh, edge of the fabric. So from this line to the forward edge, this is the forward edge, we're going to go a half inch and strike another line. Again, use the clear acrylic ruler for this. It makes the job super fast because you can line it up right on that line. Strike a line here. Now, while we're at this, um, we're going to strike a line a half inch from the edge of this zipper pole. And we're going to do it on the side that has the zipper, not this, this side, but this side. So a half inch from this edge. This will be our sew line. Now we'll flip this over and put double sided tape here. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, flip the assembly over like this and baste it to this line. It should be centered here, so be sure the spacing on the left side and That's the right the... side is the same. Measure it after you have it basted and move it if necessary. Okay, so I have about the same spacing from this side and this side. Okay, we're going to start sewing right at the end of this and I'm going to do some reversing. Very important to do reversing here. We want this not to come loose. And we're going to sew directly on top of that line that we struck. And do reversing here. So this is what you should get. We're going to cut a little bit off of this just to make it almost flush with the end. Then we're going to separate the two halves just by pulling it uh, like this and it separates completely. Now what we want to do is we want to put a little stop on one of the ends. It doesn't matter if it's this end or the opposite end. We're going to wrap some vinyl around both sides just to keep the slider from coming off one end. The other end we're going to leave completely undone. So here I've cut some scrap vinyl and what I'll do is I'll just wrap it around the end of the tooth uh, just like that. And then I will sew alongside of it. This creates a stop so the slider will not come off the end of the zipper. Now we do not want to do this to the other end, but we do want to do it to the other half right across from this one. And that creates a stop on the end. Now unfortunately I sewed this on here and I should have put this on first, uh, but it can still be done. I'm going to wrap it around here. And then I'm going to move it, the fabric, so I can just do this. Not a big deal, because you can see we can still accomplish the same task. And this is on the inside of the cushion, so nobody's going to see this. You can see that this vinyl on this side is hanging a little bit off the edge. We're just going to trim it even with the... Uh, uh, Next, we'll sew the high plate and low plates together along with the other side of the fabric pole. So this is the low plate. I'm going to flip it, low plate, 
This is the high plate. We're gonna flip, or not, we're not gonna flip it, but it does say high plate on it. So it's gonna go with this low plate directly on top, flush with this edge, okay? So basically you have that and that. Outside surfaces are facing each other. Then we're gonna take our zipper uh, puller, our puller, and we're gonna place it on uh, the low plate, on, right on top with the zipper up. You don't wanna do it like this. You wanna do it like this. So the zipper is facing up and it is centered in here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back and I'm gonna put double-sided tape here just to make sure nothing moves. I'm gonna be sewing three assemblies together at once. We wanna put it close to the edge because we don't ever wanna sew through the double-sided tape because that would show our glue, our glue when uh, the stitch is done. So we'll take the low plate and base it on top of the high plate. Then we'll take this and we'll flip it so that we can put basting tape along its edge. Then we flip it back and we center it. Once it's centered, we'll baste it down. We'll not show that. And this is the way that it'll be like this. So now this will be zipped from this end all the way to this end. Now usually the magnetic guide goes on the sewing machine like this and I'm going to put it a half inch away from the needle so there's a half inch mark on the needle plate. But it's hard to get video showing it that direction so I'm actually going to put it like this on the half inch mark. So now my stitch is a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. And we will sew this assembly together. So this sews the high plate and the low plate together, and it also sews in the fabric pole. This is a straight stitch about a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. That's what that magnetic guide's for. It acts like a fence on a table saw. We'll do some reversing at the end. The boxing has been cut, but we need to prepare it first and sew it together. That's next. Okay, so this is the back boxing and these are the side boxing pieces and our boxing for the front is incorporated into the high plate right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back boxing and I'm going to place this on top of it so outside faces, surfaces are facing each other and we'll sew a half inch here, okay? So I'm going to fold that back. And I'm going to take this one, make sure, making sure that this is up the same direction. In other words, up this way, not this way. And I'm going to put it here and sew a half inch along this edge. So that's what we're going to do next. Do reversing at the beginning and the end. Very important. So this joins the back boxing with the side boxing. Outside surfaces are facing each other. Stitch is a half inch from the raw edge. So notice that these two are facing the same direction, up. I'm going to match this one up. Outside surfaces are facing each other. And I will sew this one as well. There we go. So we're going to cut a center notch here and a center notch here. So I'm going to fold this directly in half here. This is especially important for long cushions. This is one is not very long, so it's probably not necessary, but I want you to get in the habit of doing this for any cushion because it can basically save your neck. So I'm going to cut a triangle here going no deeper than our seam allowance and then cut it over here as well. Notches placed in the boxing can help you to match up plates so they're directly across from each other. So now that we have that done we're going to take this plate and we're going to fold it directly in half and we're going to find the center of both the front side and the back side. This is a fairly small cushion and probably these matchup marks aren't that important because we're going to be matching up all the corners. However for very large cushions 
whether it be lengthwise or widthwise, matchup marks every 18 inches or so on large cushions are really important because they can help you match boxing to plates and plates to plates. This is the forward edge, this is the back edge. We're going to fold it in half and put notches in this in the same manner. What I'll do is I'll cut a few notches in this, especially around this curve. They can, they can be helpful, but at this transition, I want to cut a little bit bigger notch. I'm going to cut a V, not going deeper than our seam allowance, which is a half inch. I'm going to take that material out. And then here, everywhere else, I'm just going to cut some notches about an eighth inch or a quarter inch apart from each other at the curve. I'll do the same thing here. Don't go deeper than your half inch seam allowance, that would be a bad thing. These notches may help when sewing, but they'll also help when the uh, seam allowance has to rest inside the cushion to allow it to relax. And we'll do the same thing to this other side as well. Next, we're gonna sew this boxing to the top plates, the high plate and the low plate. Okay, so this is our high rise, our knee riser, and it's gonna be sewn to here, like that. So it goes like this. Okay, and th which means that if you continue on around the cushion, this one goes like this. So when it's sewn on, when you turn it right side out, it'll be perfect, just like that. So I'm going to splay this seam down flat so that it comes in contact or very close to that corner, like this. Okay, so where does this fall? It should fall very close to this line that we struck but it's a little bit off and it's okay to go up into this uh, curve here. It's actually good. And so I'm off by a little bit of a, an area here and I already marked it with a pencil. So we're gonna start uh, match this up so it's right at that new pencil mark that I marked, okay? So it's gonna go like this and then we're gonna start sewing here. Sew down, come around this edge, come around here and sew all the way to here. So this will be our start point. So there's my mark where, the, where it comes and lines up with the corner on the end there. I'm going to put it on this splayed out section here, right like that. Push it off of the edge, which is okay right now. Match up these raw edges and sew about four or five inches from there. So right about there. Starting about four or five inches from the area that has a lot of shape will keep us from pulling one fabric more than the other while we sew it. If we started at the corner, we may actually be off when it comes to the area that has shape. I'm not going to do any reversing because when I come around and meet up to that stitch, I'll do some reversing. We're going to sew slowly. And we're a half inch from the edge. Now I'm getting close to that uh, seam and also the curve. So I'm going to stop with my needle buried. I want to make sure this is not bubbled. I want to pull it out flat so that the seam allowance is going this way towards the uh, front of the cushion. Okay, So my fabric pole is right there. You can see it right here. It should just be laying wherever. We're not sewing through it. But the seam allowance here should be going towards me, and it is. So it's splayed out nice and flat. So I'm going to go very slowly around this corner, trying to make it, not make any abrupt curves, but gentle curves. Okay, so now I'm getting to this, so I'm going to pull this back. See how my slits are opening up? I don't want to pull it back too much because I don't want to be too abrupt. I just want to sew a half inch from that edge, and that magnetic guide's helping me to do that. Okay, so now the curve's going the other direction, so I'm going to come back this direction. Okay, I'm a little bit off here. I'm going to bury my needle a little bit, and I'm going to lift my foot, and I'm going to straighten this out a little bit without being too abrupt. Now it's a four-way stretch vinyl, so you don't want to stretch it too much because it will stretch. Now I'm coming to another curve, so I'm going to pull, pull this over, following that edge of the fabric, trying to line it up with my stitch a half inch from the edge. Then I'm going to come around here, 
Oops, I'm a little bit off again. No big deal, I'm gonna try to match it up as I come around. There we go. Now I just sew down to the edge. Now don't worry about this extra here. Remember we made this along by half inch and it's more than a half inch, which is okay. Edges are matched up and then I'm gonna do some reversing here to lock it well. There we go, there's one side. For some reason that camera angle made it look like we did a terrible job, but it doesn't look bad at all. So now we're on the other side. So I'm going to match this up to the corner very close and see where that seam falls at this uh, curve here. We want it to fall about the same spot as it did for the other side. So right where I have that mark and I'll move that up right there. Okay. Now I can't sew this direction down easily. So what I'm going to do, because I want to start here again and sew that direction, so I'm going to have to flip this so this is on the bottom side and this is on the top. And that seems scary but it's not too bad. So at this mark, I'm gonna cut a notch out of this so I know where I want to start basically right at that seam. There. So there, that notch is even with that seam right there. So I'm gonna flip this like this. So I'm gonna move this down to that edge. Seam is matched up to that notch there. I'm going to push it in and I'm going to sew about four or five inches from that locale. My boxing's on the bottom side. Since this side has the boxing on the underside and the plate on top, the process is slightly different. Watch. Okay, I'm getting to the point where they're starting, starting to get some shape. So this time I'm going to pull this the boxing underneath this direction and leave this almost straight, the top plates. Okay. So see how I'm pulling it with my hand under here like this to match up those edges. Now remember I want this tail to go this direction towards the high plate and it is, or the front. The area you should be paying attention to is the area directly across the right from the needle. Is the fabric matched up with the magnetic guide? Okay, now I'm going to come back because it's starting to go around the curve the other direction. As long as the two edges of the fabric are matched up right directly to the right of the needle along the magnetic guide, which is a half inch from the needle, the contoured edge is being followed with a half inch seam allowance. So I'm a little bit off. I'm going to try to work it in there slowly closer to the magnetic guide because I'm a teeny bit off of a half inch. And that shouldn't be any problem because the foam will compress nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this around and I might actually pull this around too. Cutting a few notches in the top plate will help that to take that curve well. So see how it matches up here pretty nicely? When you're forcing a fabric to take a turn, like here at this corner, sometimes cutting relief notches in the fabric where it wants to stretch or shrink up can help it to relax as you sew it. And it'll help it relax once the cover is done. Now I'm pretty much to the straightaway. So it's off a little bit there. See the end right here? We're going to do reversing right there. If you'll remember, when we made the uh, plate with the boxing incorporated, we made it an extra half inch long. This there is a go. little bit longer than a half inch, but it still should work great. So now my boxing is on the top side. I flipped it around, and we are going to start on this side and sew all the way around and then come to this side. So we'll just start over here. I'm going to start about uh, an inch or so off. The edge and I want to sew right through those stitches that we did uh, previously so I'm going to bury my needle on top of those stitches right like that and then lower my foot and now we'll match up the sides and sew. As we sew one or two inches on top of those previous stitches make sure they're directly on top. 
Now, before we get to this corner, we want to look to see if we're going to fall on that corner, which we are. It's pretty good. If not, I can actually pull on one fabric or push one fabric to help it to match up. But uh, we're in good shape. So when I get to this stitch, I'm going to stop a little teeny bit short of that stitch. So watch. I'm going to go slow. And I'm actually going to use the balance wheel. Now, if I do it right there, I'm going to be right in the stitch, which is okay, but I want to be just a little bit behind it. it I find it a little bit easier when to do that. And I'm going to bury my needle, the thickest part of the shaft. Then I'm going to lift my presser foot so I can pivot on that buried needle. And I'm going to turn my assembly like this. And I like to push this excess fabric past the magnetic guide. And then I'm going to lower my foot. And I'm going to sew down this side. Okay, now if our center notches are right, we know we're good, and they are. Now see, I pulled, evidently something stuck a little bit, and my center notch is not quite, well, no, it's, per, it's pretty good. It's a little bit off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this fabric in. See, there's a little bubble here, and that'll actually shrink it up a teeny bit. You don't want to do this excessively because it can cause wrinkles, but uh, that's all that's necessary, and you can start matching panels up if they're off a little bit. Okay, it looks like this corner is going to fall just about right where I want it. Looks a teeny bit long, but it's going to be still plenty good. Don't worry about it if it's slightly off. Since it's a little bit long, I'm just going to shrink it up a teeny bit more. Top boxing. Okay, when I get to this seam, I'm going to stop short of it with this fold like this. See, I pull this fabric out so I don't sew through it by accident. Right there with the needle buried, lift my foot, roll the assembly around, push this this direction so that we get that tail to sit down or the seam allowance just to lay down going around this uh, 90 degree turn. Lower our foot. Don't ever forget to lower your foot. That can cause problems. And sew down this side. Okay, now here's, we want to make sure everything's nice and flat. And it looks like it's going to be when I come up to this uh, seam here. If it weren't, I'd try to make an adjustment to one panel or the other. Now, I don't think I did reversing on the other side. I really should do some reversing here. There we go. Adding a top stitch is optional, but often recommended with a four-way stretch fabric. Sewing a top stitch is optional. This one has a top stitch along the side, while this one has no top stitch in it. So at these back corners, we're going to do a top stitch. And the seam allowance is going to fold in towards the top plate like this. At the back corners, to allow it to go in, we're going to cut some notches here, right very close to that uh, stitch that we created, going no deeper than our seam allowance, like right there and right here. So the idea is that this will fold down and this will fold around nicely because of those slits. There's some extra fabric here. Might as well take it out. No reason to see that extra fabric. Just don't cut too close to your sewing. We'll do that at both corners. We're going to remove the magnetic guide for our top stitch. Again, we're going to fold the seam allowance towards the top plate. So our stitch is going to be on the top plate, not the boxing. And we're going to start at the center back, okay, because that's the part that people probably won't see very often because it's the back side of the cushion. Hold on a minute. In retrospect, I probably should have started at the front of the cushion and sewn all the way around. That way I wouldn't have any stitches at the back of the cushion that overlap each other and some reverse stitching. This will still work, but there'll be some reverse stitching at the back side of the cushion. 
And does it have to be exactly the center? No, it doesn't. I'm going to lower my foot and I'm going to splay the fabric or pull the fabric apart left and right as I sew. And I'm going to use this inside edge of the outer foot as my guide. So let's just start sewing around. I'm going to do two stitches in reverse. One, two, and then sew around. Now I can feel the tail here. I can feel it with my fingers, so I know it's on the right side, or correct side. It would be the left side, actually, if I want to say it pro appropriately. So we're sewing through the half-inch seam allowance on the underside. When I get to this corner, I'm going to fold it out like this so that, you know, we're right on working at that corner, and I'm going to feel my tail. It's going to want to cup up on us there. Take your time with the top stitch. Everybody sees the top stitch. Okay, so I'm coming to this corner and I've got everything splayed out. If you have to only just level out an inch at a time, do that. Now I'm about a half inch from the stitch over here. My needle's buried. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and I'm gonna roll on my needle. And I'm gonna make sure my tail is tucked on top of the top plate, underneath, I'm just taking my fingers and rolling it over this way. And I'm gonna lower my foot, don't forget to lower your foot. We're gonna go around this corner. I think I touch on this a little bit later on, but when you do a top stitch, make sure your bobbin is full. There's no reason to do a top stitch and then run out of thread below and have to refill it and then start sewing directly on top of old stitches. That's just not a professional thing to do when creating a top stitch. Though if it happens, it's not a serious problem. It just doesn't look as good. Okay, we're coming to the part where there's some shape. I'm going to tuck my tail so that it's on the top plates. I'll splay my fabric apart. When you're performing your top stitch, there's a lot of balk at corners and at transitions like this, so be sure you have enough foot okay. pressure down. Everything's looking good. Make sure we get over this bump without any problems. The Alter Feed does a phenomenal job of that. I'm gonna pull the fabric apart here because we're going around a corner. It's not really a corner, it's a curvy section. I can feel my tails on the correct side, the left side. Tail still in the right spot. I just smoothed out about an inch of sewing. I'm going to stop with my needle buried. I'm going to lay this out nice and flat. Make sure my tail is the right spot. And it is. Pull my fabric left and right so we're on that first stitch. Okay, so notice how I have all these wrinkles worked out and I'm splayed out nicely. So I'm going to sew about an inch to that locale. I'm going to splay it out even some more. This is a small space with a lot of shape and because of that it cups up so that's why I'm moving so slowly and being so careful. You want to make sure that fabric doesn't get stuck on the back of the presser foot as you do this. There's a little bit of a, I buried my needle here, there's a little bit of a bump behind the presser foot because of all this bulk. So I've lifted my presser foot so I could push that out and then lower the presser foot. Make sure that the, none of the fabric's getting caught on anything around this transition. The whole point here is to sew very slowly. That way you can correct anything that's wrong. See, notice if I pull this fabric, how nicely it, everything lays now. At this bottom edge, do a little bit of reversing, going no deeper than a half inch. So we have the top stitch that we started here. We really could have started from the end and just sewing it all at once. So uh, what I did is I will start down here on this side and just start our top stitch right here at this end. 
and then we'll meet up with that middle position in the back. Didn't need to do that. Whoops. We still make mistakes here, don't we? So this is technically how I should have started the top stitch right here and then just sewn all the way around. Make sure you have enough bobbin when you're doing a top stitch, which I checked. So we're splaying everything flat. We want to make sure that nothing's stuck on the presser foot in the back as we go around this corner because that can curl up your fabric. This is the other side where there's a lot of shape. That's why the fabric's curling up. Tail's on the correct side, left of me. See the fabric curling up behind here? That's a no-no. You want to pay attention to that around this uh, shapely edge. The rest of this is done exactly as we did with the other side. We'll come to the middle position at the back of the cushion and do some reversing there. Let's move on. It's now time to sew on the bottom plate. That's next. So now what we'll do is we're going to cut off this excess. So to do that, I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it so that these are sticking upright. This one too. Then I'm going to splay this out so it's laying nice and flat like that. Then I'm going to take a straight edge from edge to edge. Okay, it doesn't it, it won't it may not be perfectly straight and that's no big deal. You just want the fabric to be laying as straight as possible when you're doing this. And let's see. So with my fabric nice and straight, though my line isn't straight, I'm going to strike a line from this one to that one. So from this edge all the way to this edge, right where the boxing stops. Then we'll trim away this excess. Now here's my center notch. I'm going to transfer that notch just by cutting a slit here. And then we know where that notch is supposed to be. Don't cut that notch deeper than a half inch past the line you just marked. This is the bottom plate. We're going to flip it so that the right side is facing up. We're going to apply double-sided tape, seam stick basting tape, a quarter inch for canvas and upholstery along all four of the outer edges, getting it as close to the outer edge as possible. All right, so we're going to start with the back edge. This is the edge that has the zipper opening, and this is the forward edge. So we're going to peel off the transfer paper along this back edge. We've cut a, a notch into the back uh, boxing earlier. We're going to match up that notch with the center notch of the plate, matching up the edges, and then we're going to carefully baste to the corners. And if it's slightly off, we're going to pull or shrink oh there see see what's happening here this has to do with not doing enough reversing which i hope is going to be okay we're not going to put a lot of stress on that if you don't reverse enough you can have panels come apart so that corner looks pretty good and then we're going to come over here and hopefully this one's going to match up yep it's it's a little teeny bit long so i'm going to going to shrink it up just a teeny bit here by putting a f no wrinkles, but not pulling on the vinyl fabric at all. Yep, and that helped. And then we're going to come down here to the side, and we're going to peel off this transfer paper. Nice thing about the basting tape is you can make sure that you are happy with the way it's uh, is uh, resting on the back plate before you take it to the sewing machine and sew. So we're going to turn everything so that it's wrong side out and sticking up. It'll make it a lot easier like that. Now here we have no center uh, matchup marks. If it were a long cushion, I'd recommend that you put matchup marks along the edge. So hopefully when we base this to it, look at that, it's perfect. It's coming right to that front edge. We're not quite on the edge of the fabric like I want. There we go. Beautiful. So that edge is basted down. 
Now, instead of going to the front, we're going to work now the opposite side, doing the same thing. Now, you, if you're a professional, you would just take this over to the sewing machine and you'd sew it together without basting it. But uh, I've done a lot of cushions, and I really like doing this because if I see something wrong, I can sometimes correct it uh, before I sew. If I see that a corner doesn't line up or isn't matched up perfectly, as we talked about, we can pull or stretch a panel only slightly. If you pull it a lot, then you would have um, wrinkles in your finished cushion. Perfect, just like that. Now we'll do the front edge. Peel off the transfer taper and do the same, and hopefully the matchup marks right in the center. If it's not, we'll make adjustments. So I'm going to start from the center. Yes, that looks beautiful. And this too looks gorgeous. Everything fell exactly where we want it to fall. So now we can take it to the sewing machine and sew. We'll start with the back edge here. So now all we have to do is, I don't know what it was stuck on, sew around the perimeter with our stitch a half inch from the edge. We'll do a little bit of reversing here. Same thing when we get to the corners here. So as I get to this corner, we're going to do the same approach that we did earlier. I'm going to fold this flap back, so very close to that first stitch. And if I have to, I can walk the machine. There, I'm almost right on top of it. My needle's buried, lift my foot. And there's a more bulk now, but uh, we can still do this pretty easily. There we go, we're around the corner. Lower the foot, don't forget that. And sew around the perimeter in the same manner. I believe the process is all the same now, so hopefully you have it. Since everything's basted, I don't have to worry about things matching up. Let's just do this front edge before we leave. So here, I've got a top stitch and I've got a, the first stitch. So I'm going to stop right on this first stitch. So watch. Right there on that stitch. Needles buried. I'd never want to go past that stitch if I can avoid it. My foot's lifted. I pivoted the material around. I lower my foot and sew down this edge. Okay, so we have this seam allowance making a candy cane twist. I don't like that. So to avoid that, what I'm going to do is cut a little bit above that stitch, no deeper than the seam allowance, and that will allow this to kind of relax and not uh, be a candy cane shape. Same thing over here. So we're going to just cut it here. And that lets that loose. So here's our, here's our fabric pole here. Here's the opening where we're going to insert the foam. And if you flip this around, this is uh, outside surfaces are facing out. Here's the fabric pole on this side. So this is going to separate the two pieces of foam, the high foam and the low foam. So we'll open up this zipper. This is not a locking zipper. That's the reason I didn't get a locking zipper. You can just do it like that. Okay, now we'll turn it right side out. Now this is going to take a little bit of effort because you do have to push all the corners out. So take your time doing this and make sure all the corners are pushed out. So here I'm putting my finger on the inside so I can push that corner out. Now we need to put a slider on this uh, zipper uh, puller on the fabric pole. So I'm going to 
pull this assembly out like this. And this is the end without the stops on it. Remember we put stops on it. And we want the slider puller to be facing um, this direction. So away from the uh, high foam. Okay, so now we'll put that slider kind of in the middle. And it is probably true that the only thing that can separate this right here is a vertical twist of the zipper. A sheer force like this won't typically separate the zipper, but I don't want to be uh, ha having to put this foam back in again. So I'm going to actually sew over this so that the, uh, if, if it gets twisted like this and wants to come apart, it won't. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine with very little working space now that our slider is installed and sew right over this end. All right, slider's in place. I'm going to take a little piece of scrap vinyl. I'm going to put it very close to the end and sew through that. Nobody's going to see this. Be careful when you sew over the teeth that you don't call it, get needle deflection. Now there's no way that's going to come apart. Now our, our high rise is 5 inches by 5 inches so it doesn't really matter how it goes in but I really want this extra 1 inch foam to be either on the top side or the bottom. I prefer it on the bottom so I'm going to flip it like this. Easiest way to get foam in a very small opening is to actually fold it in half and we opened up that zipper completely, so it, the zipper's all the way to that uh, uh, stop or end that we put on. And then we insert it in. So that I get this end shoved in. And then I'm gonna fold it in half, or fold it nearly in half, and shove this end in. Now you're gonna have to work the foam like wrestling an alligator, believe me, to get it inside of here and to stuff it in the right location. So don't just think once it's in there it's all going to come out nice and flat. It's not. It's going to have to be worked at the appropriate spot for the fabric pole to work correctly. You probably can't see it, but I can definitely feel the foam is actually buckled here at this end. So I'm going to put my fingers on the inside and I'm going to shove the block or the end of the foam into that edge. So that's what you want to do. And this can take a couple of minutes. So don't think it's uh, going to be magic. Just keep working it into the corner. See how this corner is not filled with foam? Now it is. That's what we're looking for. Something that looks like that. Okay, this pole here needs to come down the edge of the foam. And I think it's in the right spot when we zip it shut, so I'm gonna open it up. You can kind of see through the mesh here. I'm just gonna kind of cinch up the edges and pull on the slider. I'm gonna go to the midway position here, and then I'm gonna look. Oh yeah, see, look, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, the, the fabric to be pulled down. If it's pulled up, then we'd have to make some more modifications. So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna shut this up all the way. The zipper sliders all the way to the stops on that end. Now see how it's further here than it is here? That's a matter of working the foam, not anything else. So I'm gonna open it up to this point and I'm gonna push the foam deeper into this so that this rolls over the edge. This is a very important. This is the only way you can get those fabric poles to work. So the zipper's open to the midsection. I'm gonna take my um, foam and I'm gonna push it forward this direction and pull my fabric back. Okay, now let's zip it shut. You can't see that, but Look at the difference. 
huge difference. In fact, it's too much here, but I believe that's because the foam is curled there. You can actually see the foam is curled here. It's not a straight edge. So all we have to do now is just get that uh, foam to lay s straight in here so that it's a nice smooth edge. So I'll open up the zipper and I will work my foam by kind of pulling on the edge of the foam. I think we have everything in the right spot. I just want to get a nice smooth transition here with no foam. There's the foams tucked back. So I can actually work without opening up the zipper and kind of manipulate my foam into that area. So I'm grabbing the foam on the inside with my thumb. See that? It's gone. Now let's zip it up again. That looks much better. Here it does not look very good. I don't even think I need to open up my zipper here. I can just go in the inside and remember this, this, the puller doesn't go all the way to the end. So I can grab my foam. So I'm putting my thumb on the inside, into the, into the foam in here. There we go. That's not too bad. Now I think we can insert our next piece of foam. Here's what that fabric pull with the zipper looks like when it's closed up. And we believe we have the foam in the right spot. So I'm gonna take this foam. I'm gonna fold it kind of in half. Get it inside of my cover. Pushing the corners in. Then pushing these in. This is why we reinforce the end of the zipper, because if it's not reinforced, it can pop your zippers. Tuck it into the corners. So you can see that it's a lot more than just inserting the foam. You must make sure that the foam is pushed into the corners and along the edges of your cover precisely. That's one of the ways to make a cushion look good. Make sure the foam is inserted correctly. What I like to do is I like to position the seam allowance on the back side of the cushion. So I'm sticking my fingers in here, putting that seam allowance so it's resting on top of the foam all along that edge. It is here already. Looks pretty good here. And let's go ahead and zip it shut and inspect it. We may have to still manipulate the foam around, but we've got the foam pretty much worked in how we want it. Not bad. We don't want this to go down, so that's why we manipulate this uh, high foam so that we get the ridge here rather than on the back side. Because if you, if you don't manipulate your foam right, you may actually have the ridge here rather than here. We want it here on the top side. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna try to push that foam a little bit closer to this ridge like this by lifting the foam a little bit. There we go. So it's a little bit of a, hopefully a more even transition between the high foam and the low foam. By manipulating the foam, we get an even transition on the bottom side and a nice ridge on the top side. That's not too bad at all. This cushion was made from a premium vinyl called Sombrella Horizon, an engineered synthetic leather, though the principles are exactly the same for a woven fabric as well. Don't go away, the materials list and the tools list is coming up next. It is only through your loyal support that these free videos are made available. Thanks for your loyal support. And be sure to subscribe to the Sarat YouTube channel. Click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Thanks. Here's a list of all the materials and tools that we used to make this knee rise contoured cushion. We used a high density polyurethane foam and Zerite carries an antimicrobial high density polyurethane foam which helps to prevent mold and mildew. You'll find all types of foams that are available at Sarite in multiple sizes and thicknesses. We also used Sumbrella Horizon vinyl fabric which is a faux leather, a beautiful fabric and fun to work with. 
But if you choose to make it out of a woven fabric, you'll find thousands of decor and upholstery fabrics that'll work great for a contoured cushion like this. If you have any questions about the foams or fabrics or anything else about this video, please be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. These free tutorial videos are made only because of your loyal support to Sayorite. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayorite, thanks for watching.